Oh, that one. That's so good. What are you doing? Don't you knock first? Sorry, but what do you think you're doing in here? I guess you caught me playing in my wood. Well, that was a bit awkward. Anyway, welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 22 of the Top Flight 60 size P40E Warhawk build. This episode, we're going to carve out and shape up the front blocks that we installed the last episode. And to do that, I'm gonna use 220 grit sandpaper, start off with the uh, microplane, do that little shaping with that. And for the real heavy stuff, yep, these big uh, 80 grit per permagrit uh, bars. But without further ado, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new installment and like and share my videos. As always, I appreciate you watching and let's get started. Okay, I loaded my sanding bars up with fresh 220 sandpaper. I did it just like I showed you the last, uh, you know, when I loaded them up the first time, how to clean them off and, and do it. But we're gonna start with it and razor plane and get all this big chunk stuff off. Just kind of basically get it down level with the other blocks. And I, as you can, might be able to see, I put a line here. So I'm gonna be going from here toward the spinner, but this area down here, I'm gonna wait until I get my cowling uh, glued together, glassed and everything before I shape that up. So I'm just gonna be concentrating from this part of the spinner up. We're only doing that part of the, out of the, of the uh, upper cow. So let's get going. And your, your razor plane might uh, clog up. If it does, don't clear it like that. Just clear it like this. Okay, I think that's about as far as I want to go with the plane before I like dig into my fuselage sheeting and I wouldn't be a happy camper if that happened. So what I'm going to do is where the fuselage is level here, I'm going to just use this permagrit bar to bring it level with the fuselage sides and then I'll start shaping it around. All right, there's the uh, carved up nose top and sanded. Now it's 
around here and it gradually becomes flat so that your canopy once you get it on there right there's where it should go the canopy sits on there nice it's flat and it gradually goes round right about I think that's F2. Still got a little bit of sanding to do right there just to make it round. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks for now. I'm gonna take the tape off this spinner, take the spinner and engine out, and I'll I'll uh, get this all the way to the nose ring. But it ain't too shabby, I think. Look at that mess. So I'll do that, clean up the mess a little bit, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I got this pretty much roughed in, and uh, it's pretty dang close to being final sanded. I got it sanded all the way to the uh, spinner ring here. So, matches up perfect. So that's that. <clears throat> we'll, uh, I'm thinking about getting this trimmed up where you know it sets on there nice what i need to do is take this off down to where it's really really thin on this end and just taper it to the to the body contour so we'll do that next uh what else can i show you i thought about doing something i don't know if anybody's ever done this before but i thought about making this functional make like a slot in here and use like 132nd ply, make a hole back here, and put some 132nd ply in there to make like a scoop. It'll have to have sides, and it'll have to go down inside, like curve down inside the cowl. Because if this is open, and you know, you're flying 100 miles an hour, air is just shut, you know, ramming in there. It'd be like a little ram air system. But air is going in there really fast it could whoosh, rip this thing right off so i need to make it to where when air is coming in this is not going to fly off so it's not going to air won't go behind the scoop that i'm going to make so uh, we'll get this fitted up so i know what i got to work with and that's not going to be this episode that i do that that ram air deal but i think that would solve <coughs> the uh, carburetor issues that some people are having, like, uh, you know, what they call it? Uh, I forget what it's called. You know, where, where the, oh, the, the fuel boils and uh, your engine cuts out. But that should cool the engine back that way, force air back over and uh, the back side of the motor and out the the uh, flaps here so i'll have air coming in on the bottom through the engine air coming in here down past the car and out so we'll see i don't know if i'm gonna i don't know if i'm gonna accomplish what i want to accomplish but as per usual i sanded uh this area here where the sheeting is it's like paper thin, so I'm going to have to put some epoxy in there in that little 1 8 inch or 3 16 inch space to strengthen that up before I glass it. But it's good for now. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to work on this. And uh, I'll do that off camera unless you want me to do it fast speed or something. But, you know, you'll get to see what it looks like when it's trimmed up. So let's get going on that. Okay, first things first, I'm going to mark with a pencil where I want to take this scoop down to on this side. And then we'll just slowly, slowly but surely, we'll just trim off this end. I think it's probably uh, from maybe here down to get it to sit flat. So uh, I'll just draw a line where I want to cut initially. It's not going to be all at one time. So we can fit this up. Fits the front pretty good. 
I'm just gonna freehand this. And we'll cut this back side so that we know where we want to go to. So basically, like this, it's going to be just that very back edge is going to be up here. I don't want that that high. Looks ugly. Plus, you got to make sure you got that in the right spot. I think it's like three eighths inch from the from the front. Let me look. <clears throat> yeah, it's like three eighths. Okay, five sixteenths. So let's do that. Let's, so we know where we're going to. Let's put a five sixteenths mark right there. That's where it has to be. So let's get to uh, cutting that. When you cut this, you want to cut it, you want to leave your line and then sand to it. And you don't want to ruin this because you ain't getting another one unless you buy another kit. So basically like that much. I don't even know if you can see that over there. Let's sand that flat a little bit. So now, I'm gonna just take my pencil and follow along this line. Whoops. The best you can, just, you know, just a little bit. I'm gonna make that darker so I can see it. Cut that slowly. I wish I could see. Dang bifocals. Just take a few, you only need like maybe two or three swipes with the knife and then it'll just break right off. And you'll have to like sand it smooth because it's gonna get rough.
And I'm just carving it to the line. I moved you around so I can try to show you this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to show you this, but just cutting it to the line. Close. Yeah, you get a couple swipes, it'll break right off. Almost there. So that's one side and then I'll sand this a little bit just to make it even. As you can see, we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to take a little bit off the front a little bit, but we're getting the basic shape of it. And I got to do the other side too, so we'll do the other side now. Okay, I got my initial line. I'm not gonna cut up to it. At least try not to. You just bend it over and it breaks right off. And I know I'm way off of that one, so I'm just gonna stand it to it. In order to fit the cow, there has to be shims put in right here. And I'm guessing it's gonna be a 16th of an inch. I put the cow up to it. I still haven't got the cow glued together yet, but I'll do that. But as you can see, 
even a sixteenth of an inch might not be enough. So here's a sixteenth. Yeah, that might be. Check that out. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll glue sixteenth of an inch shims on there. Here and here on both sides. And uh, we'll go on to the next step. So I'm gonna make these shims a half an inch. I think that should be plenty. They don't say what size they are, but I'm pretty sure it's good enough. So I'm gonna use scrap. And just use as much as I can. That's two and three eighths. Pretty sure the other one's going to be two and three eighths. I'll check. But... Three and three sixteenths. Now your uh, measurements might be different than mine, so I'm just going by what mine is. Yep, two and three eighths. Like three and three eighths. What were they over there? Three and three eighths. No, oh, that's weird. A little off. Oh, because of the firewall. All right, so I gotta change that. So one's gonna be three and three sixteenths, which is that one. And this one's gonna be three and three eighths. That should do it. So I'll just cut this first. These cutting mats are almost a must if you want to save your knife blades. All right, now we'll just cut these to length. I'll sand them smooth just to make them nice. square they can get them. And one more. Don't forget the longer layer here. Right. So the long one goes on that other side. I'm just giving it a just a smooth up. And actually, I think. These short ones go on first. And I might be too long on the other ones anyway, so.
is all trial and error, basically. So these will be going here. So that's one of them. And I gotta put that cowl on. It's dang near perfect right there. So let's see what happens when this down here. I think that sixteenth is <coughs> good enough. So I'm gonna glue that on now. But before I do that, I wanna scratch that paint a little bit so it'll stick. Just to rough it up a little bit. Just going to use thick, or not thick, but uh, medium CA. Side. Now this is going to be too long because I didn't realize it. I'll have to cut it a little short so I'll mark it. That glue all over my part and my hands. Now let's sand it first and make sure it's nice. Right <clears throat> I hope everybody's enjoying the uh, the build so far. I think it's funny to see people on the groups and stuff playing their our videos, me and Mike's videos in the background while they're building their own plane, that's kind of cool. Okay. These will have to be fuel proofed. All right, that's that. Just like that. Now I'm gonna do the other side off camera and then we'll move on to installing the blocks that hold the cowl right here. All right, there's the right side. And the left side. All right, so I'll give you a once around here. That's the P40 spinner from Top Flight.
got the tail setting on there temporarily. <clears throat> I think I'm going to call this episode 22. Got a lot done. I mean, it didn't seem like it, but, you know, it takes a lot of time to do some of this stuff. All right, that's going to do it for episode 22. Got the, the cow all, or the upper cow all shaped up. And the uh, shims we got in there. I didn't put the blocks in. I was going to do the blocks, but I'm going to wait until I glue the cow together. I don't know if I'm going to do a video of that. Uh, there might be other videos out there, but, uh, you know, I might. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, that'll do it for episode 22. Next episode, we'll concentrate on getting that cowl done. I want to get the cowl done, primed and painted, you know, bondo and all that stuff, and mounted before I go on to the wing. That should be the last thing I do before we do the wing or go back to the retracks into the wing and all that. So, till next episode, thanks for watching.